Hey, everybody. Have you checked out Malcolm Gladwell's new book, Talking with Strangers? Uh, it got me thinking. Now, um, I'm a huge fan of his. I've read and listened to all his books multiple times uh, with outliers. I have it in every format and have gone through it uh, several times. And that one was kind of game changing for me to break down what makes somebody great because my whole book. Uh, life has been committed to finding out what makes great salespeople. Now, this book I was looking forward to forever, and uh, it is a good book, and I've been thinking about it, and I wanted to do a whole episode on it because it brings up the, the key things that I work on, that I teach, because what are we doing as salespeople? We're talking to strangers all day, even the people that we've become uh, friendly with, who know, like, and trust us, who are our customers. Uh, they are still a little outside of our tribe, or they view us sometimes outside their tribe. Now, this book uh, is probably not one of his best. If, so if you're not a fan of his, you can you know certainly get a lot off of podcast interviews and YouTube um, uh, interviews with him. But uh, here's the key things that I took away from it. And I hope you listen to this because this can be a game changer as far as how you look at a deal, how you look at selling. Because I think we too often are forced into this. We either know it or we don't know it. It's the, the quiz show versus the talent show. And sales is a talent show, whether you like it or not. How many times have you told your manager and told yourself, hey, I tried that, I did that, and you did, but it didn't work. It's how you do it so often. And so many elements because we're talking to people. And no matter how good you are, nobody has ever been liked by everybody. So here, here's the main things out of the book. Um, First of all, it's a little hard to get into it because it makes you feel uncomfortable all the time because we, you know, he calls it wrong or misunderstand the situation. What I'm, and that's true. It's not wrong, but it, um, I don't think it's as accurate. The word that I'm thinking about <coughs> is incomplete, meaning that no matter how well you know a particular deal, a particular person, it's still an incomplete understanding of them and their motives. And even yourself, it, it most likely is incomplete. Now, I, I was hoping that he would have a whole lot more science behind it, uh, like neuroscience, not social science, because social science is so contextual based off of sociology, where neuroscience is much uh, closer to the mammal brain, really how our brain works. And if, if you do any research on this, it's easy to tell when two strangers meet, two mammals meet, guess what happens? Uh, kind of one of three things. One runs away, they fight, one uh, shows submissiveness, um, or they fight and make up, uh, or they, they intimidate each other. Uh, you'll see this every time it, two dogs meet. And in sales, this is how we get stuck in prospecting, that very first initial cold outreach. And this is what I teach in the Start the Conversation, Get the Meeting, is I take the neuroscience and work with it. Uh, doing judo, basically going with the resistance and preventing the resistance instead of trying to overwhelm the resistance or trick it. Work with how people meet and connect with strangers. Now, he's referencing uh, Tim uh, Levine, who's a professor who's <laughs> insanely dry. I tried to watch his YouTube video and it was uh, painful at best. But he's more on the sociology side of it, meaning that we biased to truth, meaning that we assume that people are good and are telling the truth. Eh, uh, I'm not sure everybody does that. But some of the case studies in the book 
are not that interesting. The, the key one that he focuses on is police um, misunderstanding and uh, overreacting to little situations. And he uses this case that was down in Texas about somebody who was pulled over for not signaling. And both of them escalate way too fast about nothing. And the person ends up getting arrested and then three days later commits suicide in the jail. And it's just this tragic misunderstanding over nothing, the most trivial of things. He was only going to give her a warning, meaning there was no cost to it. But both people refuse to kind of understand what each other was going through. And this is what happens in sales. And what we tend to think in sales is right or wrong. But I think the magic word here is incomplete. Because incomplete, we can accept. And incomplete is true. We never completely understand what someone else is going through, what they're facing, And sometimes even they don't completely understand it. It could change in the moment, like the weather. But what happens is that we kind of think binary. I either understand it or I don't. And this is kind of the problem that we have today in sales with the focus being on, you know, stages and math and CRM, all all these things that we kind of need to some extent but they're incomplete because we're dealing with people and then groups of people. And we're working at the human conscious level instead of understanding the primal mammal level, the unconscious mind. Now, if if one part was 95% and the other part was 5%, which one would you focus on? Now, this is a, a stat that Uh, really overwhelmed me when I learned it because I thought it was maybe 60, 40, 50, 50. And then I start, I've been studying this for now a year. And what it is, is 95, five, meaning 95% of our brain's capacity is unconscious. All the stuff that keeps us breathing, uh, you know, when we go to sleep, when we wake up, how we drive, all this stuff is subconscious. If we had to think about it consciously, we'd be exhausted in 15 minutes. Now, this is why we have to understand this and accept this idea that we are incomplete, incomplete in our understanding of a deal, incomplete of our understanding of what someone else is thinking, why we have to get out of our own head and study this outward mindset of trying to understand the other person. Now, this police situation is interesting because there was empathy at the beginning. The officer uh, was trying to understand why the driver was nervous or having a bad day. Uh, She had out-of-state license plates. She had run a a a stop sign on private property so he had no jurisdiction there and he was he was kind of fishing uh just you know coming out of a university campus which kind of gives you a little bit of concern out of state plates you know whatever but it, it could have been taken care of in five minutes he could have let her go he could have given her a warning and even a ticket it would have been no big deal nothing worth getting excited over but if, if you, I watched the, uh, the dashboard cam, and I can't imagine why either person, other than their emotions, their unconscious, uh, her position is, you have no right to pull me over. What did I do? Uh, you were trying to get around me, so I got out of your way. And he's like, well, you didn't signal. He's like, I, I just wanted to get out of your way. And then she's getting nervous and wants to smoke a cigarette. And then he apparently does, doesn't like cigarette smoke. Asks her to put it out. She argues with him. Oh, and, and you, just, you see this over and over if you watch police videos on YouTube where both people are, are just a little off and it just escalates. And in sales, the deals that we lose are usually because we're just a little off. We're missing some element. We're not connecting enough with the other person, not understanding what their real motive is and how to help them. 
how to get to uh, the issues that they are going to face. We tend to start talking about us and our product and uh, case studies and everything, and sometimes that resonates and sometimes it doesn't. Now, if I haven't convinced you that the word incomplete can make the difference in your selling, because what it does is different than paranoid. Now, paranoid has like this assumption that somebody's after you. Incomplete just has this like, you know, I should really think about this more. I should not get super comfortable with it because if I do, I'm not going to see what could go wrong. Because incomplete is a conscious, conscious mind emotion, a conscious mind function. Our subconscious cannot deal with incomplete. Our subconscious mind wants to know something or not know it. Wants, is this a threat or is it just noise? That's how it thinks. Is this interfering with my life? my next breath, my next glass of water, my next nap, my next meal. That's how it's been conditioned for thousands and thousands of years. And we're thinking, oh, well, what does this mean? I'll give you a story. I went to high school with Mike and Matt. Now, they were identical twin brothers, and I've been friends with them since kindergarten. So you're talking 13 years of primary school and have stayed in touch with both ever since. And they they were the classic twin boys. They dressed alike by choice, had identical interests, developed their own little language when they were kids that only they could understand, played tricks on their parents, their teachers, their friends. No one could tell them apart other than their parents. So here are two people who share the identical DNA, lived together every day until they went to college together. They were roommates in college until they were 22. And here they are now. I had dinner with one of them and he was like, you know, I haven't talked to my brother in over a year. And I go, what the hell? You guys were like (laughs) identical twins. And he said, well, he just doesn't get me anymore. You know, his priorities changed. And I'm like, there's nothing you can work out. And it was just, you know, and it seems silly for brothers to go to therapy. And it's like, you just can't like go away for a weekend and hear each other out and get back to the things you do have in common. I mean, do you really want your kids not to know your brother? And, you know, I kind of got them thinking and focused on it. But then I was like, how can these people, you know, this, this is, you know, goes beyond really a marriage or a relation. This is like from day, pre-day one, you know, inception all the way through life. And they still don't understand each other. Now, this word incomplete is now part of my mantra. And when I look at deals, I go, I say to myself, I'm incomplete about this deal. And I never will be complete. And that's okay. But it keeps me thinking. It keeps me wondering how I can become better. Because we are performers. This is a talent show, not a quiz show. Yes, you can learn the details of the deal. You can guide people through it. And in my course, Closing the Complex Sale, no matter how many deals you've been through, it still takes a lot of finesse. The people at the companies need our help to get things done. The CEO, even if it's their owner, they are going to be talking to other people. They're going to be thinking about it. They assume that they're in complete understanding of the world. So I hope you will check out the book if you're a fan of his. At minimum, listen to an interview of him and understand that we are talking to strangers every day, all day, and that our understanding of them, no matter how robust and thorough and time-consuming, is still just a little bit incomplete. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'm trying not to do monologues, but I think this one I really wanted to get out because I think this view of sales will help you 
Too many people focus on what you say and other people focus on what you ask. But I think if you can focus on what do you understand, how can you put yourself in the other person's place? Not just have empathy or empathize, but really see the world from their vantage point, no matter how incomplete it is, to just try and see what they're up against, what they're feeling, how they get rewarded, and what they care about. I hope you enjoy this, and if you'd like, uh, please stop by my website and check everything out at b2brevenue.com and learn more about the courses. Uh, YouTube channel is Maverick Method. We'll see you next time.